Hello and welcome to the 23rd episode of Great Quarter, guys. I'm your host, Andrew Cox, in here with Kevin Hill. How are we today, Kevin? Oh, we're doing great today. It's a, it's a great uh, day in Chattanooga, beautiful weather, and we're ready to talk about what's going on in finance and freight. Yeah, I mean, we're doing our best to try to keep up with the news every day. Uh, there's, there's always so much going on. We're seeing volume levels surge and then recede. We're seeing unemployment levels like we've never seen before. Uh, and now we're seeing a lot of these companies filing 8Ks. That's going to be our discussion uh, for, for today. It is, you know, with all, as you said, with, with COVID-19 and basically unemployment going off the charts, you know, basically companies are, are filing those 8Ks and basically those are just really material changes in the business, whether that is liquidity, mm -hmm. you know, guidance on future earnings, things like that. So you're seeing a rash of 8Ks filed in, in this time of year, uh, kind of around earnings season, you do see a lot of 8Ks uh, filed, but right now it's for, for different reasons than normal earnings season. Right. And we will jump into those reasons here in a, in a little bit. Uh, but a couple follow-ups of, of last week, you know, last week we began to talk uh, We'll do a recap of the previous week's long short. So this week's, we're looking mm -hmm. at last week's long short. Our two were unemployment rate at the end of March being above 10. You went over, I went under. We were both a little bit, it came in much lower than we expected because we were kind of looking at, at lagging data. The, the unemployment mm -hmm. rate came in at 4.4%, but that's really three weeks ago, unemployment rate. It, it was, it was before those, those massive two weeks that we saw. It probably had that, that, that third week in there, or the, the second week of March, where mm -hmm. it jumped 33% before mm -hmm. it tr jumped 10, 10 yeah. times and another 10 times. Uh, but if you go by, you know, basically the initial jobless claims and workforce calculations, Dr. Jason Miller, uh, who I always follow his math, uh, did some back of the envelope uh, on LinkedIn. And the true unemployment rate right now is probably somewhere around 9.4, 9.5% based on the initial jobless claims. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen estimates that, that the real unemployment right now is 12 to 13%, right. as, as high as that right now. Yeah, it was Janet Yellen, right? The, uh, the ex-former yes. Fed, uh, Fed chairman that, uh, that said 12 to 13% is likely the unemployment rate right now. The other long short that we had from last week was about college football. We were asking whether it would be played with people in the stands last fall. I think we both went optimistically. We, we, we hope that they will be, but it's still up in the air. We're now, we've now heard that um, there's thoughts that some universities won't even go back to school in the fall, so that's, that's probably a, a downer and a, a, a bad omen for whether or not they'll play any football in the fall. It's, it's very much so. I know the president had a conference call with all the, the professional league, you know, NFL, NBA, MLB, to, to see when they might be able to start. There's really no good answer right now mm -hmm. for when they can. I know in colleges, um, George was telling me, that they have to make their, their decisions pretty soon within the next 30 days, whether they're going to have fall, fall campus, you know, basically if, if, if basically the fall, fall semester is going to be on campus or not. Mm -hmm. So in 30 days, I mean, it's still going to be a very cloudy outlook. So that is still very much up in the air. Yeah, that's such a tough decision to make with so much uncertainty left ahead. We have no idea where we're going to be even a month from now. Ask six months from now. That's, that's a difficult decision to make. Uh, and then an, an update on our last, our first news segment from last week. We called it One Good Piece. This was the idea that we're in a we're in an environment where we're going to have terrible data, terrible economic data, and bad headlines for months on end. So I thought it'd be fun to have a little, an exercise to find one good piece of data, one positive piece of economic data. Last week, we did the Chinese manufacturing PMI. We had seen that China had a very quick uh, rebound in the manufacturing production mm -hmm. side into a slow growth as of March. This week, we're doing some regional differences in foot traffic data. So these are of the five, of the four biggest retailers, Costco, Walmart, Sam's Club, and Target. We looked, uh, this, is, this is data from Placer AI, which is a, a, a retail intelligence chain. We looked mm -hmm. at foot traffic over the last four weeks so the last week of February and the first three weeks of March. Again, this is, this is kind of an indication of how difficult it was to find a good piece of data. The data is actually really bad. I mean, the, the, the foot traffic fell off tremendously from up in the mid-30s to high 50% mm -hmm. range for, for all of the stores across the entire country. But the good thing was that the foot traffic didn't drop off as much in some of those states where, where they didn't have as many cases, like Texas or Arizona. Yeah, Texas and Arizona saw a positive growth, much lower growth than the, the previous weeks, right? But, but you saw New York and Florida plummet in, in negative growth on, on foot traffic. New York, you can definitely 
definitely make a case for why New York was. Uh, Florida was just a, just started their um, stay at home yeah. directive <coughs> order it's just a couple three days ago, uh, kind of, kind of right before the weekend. I saw a, a drop as well, so I, I don't know exactly what the reasons are from that. And this mm -hmm. doesn't count e-commerce, right? No. So there's there's some things you can read out of this. One reason that you could think why the foot traffic dropped so much is because of the increased use of curbside delivery and you know curbside pickup and uh, and e-commerce play. Uh, but it's not enough to to, to kind of equate the drop to make it seem like the revenue sales were the same. The truth is that all of the sales across these companies fell over the course of March. But the good read through is mm -hmm. that as the situation, as the coronavirus situation gets better or doesn't worsen, the data doesn't, worse, doesn't get any worse either. Sure. Meaning that it wasn't as bad in Texas or in Arizona. So that gives me a little bit of confidence in the people that are, are claiming that we'll have a very speedy retail recovery. I'm not so much in that boat yet, but mm -hmm. This is, it does give me a little confidence. It does. It gives you a little bit of confidence that, that the rebound will be more of a V than maybe we thought uh, about a week ago. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, we get so much new data every week. And it's crazy that, you know, one week we're at, we're at a U shape, the next we're at a V shape, the next we're at a, uh, a wavelength shape. Of uh, yeah, like yeah. We, again, everything we're saying, they're, they're all guesstimates in a, in a time of great uncertainty. So they are. You can't go by any historical data. You know, basically, human beings really don't control this process. It's a virus and a yep. pandemic, and basically it will run its courts. And how it does that, no one knows right now. Well, let's talk about how, how some of the companies, especially tra transportation companies, are dealing with this time yeah. of great uncertainty. They're trying their best to be transparent. This is why the 8K is kind of being used as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a level of transparency to shareholders. And, you know, and the 8K is a really broad, uh, a broad use of a filing. It's basically any time there's material changes to the business, any time anything's relevant to the shareholders, they have to file one of these 8Ks. Yeah, and, and it's different. You know, the, there's, there's some major SEC filings, uh, the 10Qs are definitely major. You know, those are the quarterly earnings reports that, that companies file with the SEC. Then you have the 10K, which is the annual report, or the, the share, it includes the shareholder's letter in there as well. So you have the 10K. Uh, those are the two major ones that Wall Street really pays attention to. You have some others like a 13D, which is, I believe, uh, basically uh, beneficial ownership. You know, if you cross a, if an investor crosses that 5% threshold, mm -hmm. then they have to file a 13D and declare their intentions, whether they're going to be an activist or a passive investor. So that's kind of like Carl Icahn territory. Right. And, um, and a few other famous yeah. people out there. Yeah, see, the, one of the, and also one of the big differences between the the ten, uh, sorry, the eight K and the ten Q or the ten K is that this one isn't required uh, always. You know, it's not a. It has to be filed every quarter or every year. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of an as needed basis. Special situations, right? Right. So you want to let's discuss a couple yeah. of those special situations. You know, do, we'll, we'll talk about some of the reasons that they have been being used in the in this most prevent most recent uh, freight cycle. But mm -hmm. over overall, I mean, things like you know completion of an acquisition or or uh, <clears throat> and anything that, that requires a shareholder vote, like a Correct. completion or a tender uh, acceptance that, that, that is material enough that, that requires a shareholder vote. Right, and you know the reasons we're seeing them. I guess some of the themes we'll touch about them in the beginning, and we'll talk about them at the end of, of why we're seeing these companies uh, file these 8Ks. Most of them are just dealing with liquidity, making sure that they have enough money in their pockets to, to weather the storm, isn't it? Yeah, that's number one thing, and it's just not transportation. It is across all industries, all companies out there. You know, public companies are all tapping down any credit revolvers, credit agreements that they have with the banks because it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Right. So everyone is kind of a mad rush, so you're going to see a lot of AKs throughout transportation, and we've seen it so far, and you're going to see a lot of 8Ks filed on those liquidity events, basically drawing down or entering into those credit agreements, getting those loans when they can get it right now across all industries, auto, industrial, uh, I don't know if, if shell players can get those now or not, yeah, but if, the, if they can, they're, they're drawing those down as quickly as possible. So let's talk about that as, as the first reason why people are filing AKs right now is to, is to draw down liquidity. Let's jump into a couple of the companies that have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with FedEx. So FedEx, after after the last 12 months, they've actually drill, drawn down the entire the entirety of their $1.5 billion yes. uh, dollar credit uh, line, their revolving credit line with their bank. And they've now issued uh, $3 billion in debt in bonds. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be a gradual release of these. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're at different points of, uh, of expiring. But $3 billion, that's 2, 2x their normal 
365 day credit revolver. It is, so you're gonna have that balance sheet, right? But, but you're gonna have cash on hand, cash on hand to, to weather any storm. And basically, if you don't need it at the end of the cycle, you have you know cash to play with, buy back shares, repay the debt, expand, anything you want to do, right? Right. And something FedEx did, and what you're seeing, uh, all of these companies do. I think in unison, mm -hmm. once they file 8K, part of that, I think 90% of them at least are pulling forward guidance over at least the next quarter, probably further than that, because we're in a black swan event and. How do you really give guidance to Wall Street right now or to investors uh, when you have no idea what tomorrow brings? Right. I mean, that's, uh, I think ArcBest was another one of those companies that, mm -hmm. that drew down some credit and then also just completely either removed guidance or, or, or drew all down guidance significantly to just kind of give, give shareholders an understanding of what's going to happen in the next 12 months. I mean, most of these companies are in a pre pretty bad place. We'll talk about that in the DHL supply chain pricing power index, where a lot of the carriers are going to be hurt over the next couple months. But, uh, you know, another company that drew down uh, off a of credit line was Hub Group. They, they drew down a, a little over a third, or a little under mm -hmm. a third, excuse me, of their revolving credit line. Uh, and they also withdrew guidance the same, uh, the yep. same as, uh, the same as exactly. our best. Ryder, Ryder also drew down a credit line and also talked about material weaknesses in the, specifically the automotive industry and how that's hurting business right now. So basically that's a, a material event that is going mm -hmm. to come out in earnings and come out in, in their profitability, you know, basically whenever they report at the end of April, early May. And so they're, they're getting ahead of the curve and letting investors in the market know that that there's been material damage done to the business. Right. What, what does automotive make up of trucking? Something like 12 or 13 percent of, of so, total yeah. throughput. I mean, but if you're if you're overexposed or disproportionately uh, at risk of, of only moving automotive, I mean, that's a, that is a one industry that is completely shut down, near cancellation. It, it is. You saw that with uh, Pam Transportation's uh, layoffs. I think it was last week or the week before. You know, they went through the GM strike, or all these companies who are really exposed. Universal is another one who's really exposed to the automotive sector. They went through. Their GM strike in what that was third quarter mm -hmm. of 2019. Yep. Uh, so that really hurt the business. And then this downturn right now with the manufacturing uh, plants shutting down. All, you know the big three automakers, the truck makers are shut down. Most of the parts makers, Cummings uh, is a, another one that announced uh, late last week that they were shutting down production for a time. Some of them are making ventilators. Um, some of them are have just furloughed workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a theme we'll, we'll touch on a little bit about our expectations for uh, the weekly jobless claims coming up. It'll be here on Thursday. Uh, you know, we've seen these just ridiculous numbers of more and more people being furloughed and laid off. We'll, we'll touch about, yeah. we'll touch on that. We'll, we'll save our thoughts for there uh, a little bit later. Uh, and then one more reason, this is a, a topic that I wanted to get into. This is one more company that also filed an 8K, and this was uh, Covenant Transport. And their 8K was to announce their uh, halting of the share rebuyback program. And the reason I bring this up is I think a lot of these transportation companies are going going to be weary of accepting the federal uh, the federal buyout money the one the ones that's allocated for public mm -hmm. companies i think especially the public guys will will be weary of doing that they'll look for any other avenue to draw down money to 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 feed the balance sheet so that they don't have to take that money because they want to have the freedom to make their own decisions and buying back buying back shares and yeah and doing that. Do you, do you agree? I, I definitely agree because uh, it, taking federal money they they're, they're going to give up control of at least management, right? So, so basically, they'll have to halt some of the share buybacks, or mm -hmm. most all of them. Mm -hmm. There'll be some executive compensation rules that are in effect as well. I think that that finally, or that that made it into the final bill. Uh, so you're going to have all these strings and conditions. So if you have a revolver out there, you're going to tap that down and get as much liquidity mm -hmm. and and basically hope that it's only a two or three month event. Right. And if so, you're going to be okay. Right. Well, good man. So overall, let's talk about some of the themes that we've discussed over the last you know, 10 or 15 minutes. The first one is definitely the 8K theme is drawing down uh, their credit revolvers or issuing debt, trying to get liquidity on the balance mm -hmm. sheet, right? We'll count that as the, the number one theme. Uh, the second theme that we, you know, we saw from uh, Hub Group and we saw from, other, from others, they were just announcing additional risks. You know, during that 10K, mm -hmm. you, have to, you know, have to write out your financial risks over the next 12 months. Obviously, many of them didn't have a, a pandemic, pandemic, like uh, COVID-19 shutting mm -hmm. down the entire economy. So many of them have just issued that uh, along with a, with a tie that we're reducing guidance for the next 12 months. Yeah, so, so those are the two big main themes that you're going to see in 8Ks going forward in the next two or three months is certainly 
pulling down, getting liquid, getting um, you know pulling down any credit that you can, removing guidance, and that's going to be a common theme, a really common theme going forward over the next couple months, and um, and material declines in in the business. Yeah, I mean, we can't get ourselves. Like, the current macro uh, environment is it's awful. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, 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 awful. it's absolutely it's, it's, terrible. So, it's, so people are building up a liquidity cushion, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is a good thing for the employees. This is a good thing. That, this is a good thing for shareholders. This is them fighting is. tooth and nail to keep their company alive. It is. And and basically, if you're a public company out there with untapped credit revolvers or, or credit agreements, it, it's in your best have interest. Shareholders breathing down your neck. Uh, yeah, to, 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 to pull that down right? because. Right. Basically, who knows what's going to happen? You don't want to be the last person pulling down your credit revolver after the banks have have kind of ran away from you, right? right. So, so it is important for for companies to to really do that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like two simple points why you're seeing so much of this happen. Is the truth is that one, they need it and they got to have mm -hmm. the money, and two, the interest rates are so low that even if the banks yeah. are, are putting a little edge on top of the uh, on top of treasury yields, you're still getting you're still getting debt at cheaper than you can at any other time in history, really. Exactly right. And a lot of these are have been in place for months or years, right? The the you the know revolvers. these revolvers, right? right. So the, it's there when you need it. It's kind of like a rainy day fund, and right now is a very much a rainy day. Yeah. So it's, it's time to to pull that in, make sure that you have enough cash to run your operations over the next few months at least, if not, you know, over the next twelve months. So we do a we do a quarterly survey of carriers, and again, these are smaller carriers. They're not the big the, the thousand fleet public guys that we're talking about over the last week. Yeah, we have preliminary results from from guys running about five to twenty five trucks right now. Right, and we can you know you can see the uh, the negativity and the the, the pessimistic uh, thoughts of these of these smaller guys, and you can see how that's translating not only through the big guys to the small guys, but there's a reason that all of these companies are drawing down their credit their credit revolvers, and it's trickling down to the small guys. We can talk about those results. Uh, in a little bit, but you got you had something. Uh, yeah, so, so basically, we, we do this every quarter, and we, we've had it we've gone back to the fourth quarter of 2018. We saw it bottoming out in Q3 of 2019. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't think it was it, it, that was really the bottom of the cycle, and it probably was the bottom of the natural cycle. Uh, but with the pandemic, it has cratered again, yep. and it's a very pessimistic. You know, load volumes uh, significantly down. About half of the respondents. Yep. Uh, about half as well. Rates are going to be down, and COVID nineteen pandemic is going to be a huge, uh, huge risk. And right. that's that's what the survey is telling us right now. Yeah. So we, we'll tie, we'll dive into those just a little bit slightly. As you just said, uh, over fifty percent of our respondents are expecting significantly lower freight volumes in Q two as compared to Q two nineteen, and that's another thirty percent expecting slightly lower. So I mean, mm -hmm. we're looking at eighty percent expecting lower volumes, and that's I mean that's almost a guarantee uh, that that over the next few months we've seen that uh, Seth Seth Holm wrote today in the in the Daily Pickup that in the next two weeks, uh, fifty four percent of retail businesses will officially be closed. Right now, it's something something like 25, but the number mm -hmm. is growing every day. Uh, but half the economy, the entire business is shut down. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't bode well for free. It really doesn't. And then those initial GDP estimates for the second quarter of minus 25, minus 30 percent were astonishing when you looked at them for the first time. Uh, Janet Yellen was, was mm -hmm. on CNBC, part of the 12 or 13 percent of unemployment right now. She's forecasting, and she's former Fed chair, uh, she's forecasting 30 percent. And I think that's basically we're getting to a consensus right. of Q2 GDP of taking a 30 percent hit. And that's a, that's a scary environment to be in. Yeah, it's an extremely scary environment because we, we again don't know how quickly it could recover. Uh, we would hope that that's you know we have some signs that things could be good. You know one one is a it's a mixed sign. We were talking about this earlier about the, mm -hmm. the Chinese tourism. We had seen this this story up where, I mean uh, yeah, the I'm first week the first weekend where they had sent people back to work. You you look up on the, the outdoor hills and things and there's just thousands and thousands of people crammed in. Shoulder I mean to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder outside I mean, and most of them were wearing masks. But I mean shoulder to shoulder as far as you can see. There's a camera on top of the hill. Yep. And it was just like, and it just looked like another outbreak waiting to happen. And so, it, you know, whether there's an really outbreak give me coming a, or not, a great feeling. it does give me the feeling that that's exactly what we're going to see in the U.S. As soon as they allow people to go back outside and, and visit the outdoor tourist spots, I mean, I got a feeling it's going to be. I, it's, it's another outbreak crowded. waiting to happen. You're right, but I think yeah. people are going to be dying to get to get around each other. Really, I, I think so too. It's, it's just, you know, how long is that going to take? How, right. you know, when are you going to be comfortable with it? 
And so, this, so that's, that's really the determination, I think, between a V-shape and U-shape recovery, is, is how comfortable, confident. how yeah. confident we feel going out and being around other people. Uh, so on the COVID, we asked, we asked the carriers and the truckers, uh, more than half, uh, nearly half, believe that, COVID's, that COVID represents a significant risk to trucking, and more than a third say it's an extreme risk. I think that's fair to say that, that this yeah. is, I mean, this has proven right, to be the, the greatest two weeks in trucking and now going to be a really terrible uh, Yeah, no, six right? Eight weeks. It, it, it's, it's weird Little because it was like two or three weeks ago that, that we actually drafted the survey. And we kind of got delayed a little bit and just now really hitting it hard. And it was kind of like, well, I wonder what they'll say. Two yeah, or three I, weeks wish, ago, I wish right? we would have asked it just before this whole I, thing. I know, right? and, then, and then against now, we could have, I, that could have been a fun survey. Yeah, to, to it compare. would have been really fun because it's like, well, I, I wonder, you know, it was kind of up in the air, you know, how seriously they were going to take it. And mm-hmm. now, so there's no doubt, right. we've got to take it serious. Uh, so when we're talking about regions, we, you, know, you had mentioned mm-hmm. that the Northeast and New England, two-thirds of the respondents say that that's the area that they think will experience the most volatility. But just after that, what kind of tied for second was the West Coast and the Southeast. Yeah, the West Coast and Southeast. So I don't know why the Southeast so much. Maybe it's because it's on the eastern side uh, of the U.S., I don't know. I, 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 mean, we I really to, don't know, know either. We have, we have as many major markets here as we do on the West Coast, I'd say, uh, you know, if we can compare them. But either way, I think, I think there's going to be volatility everywhere, in my mind. I, I think there will, too. I mean, the West Coast was, was the first, uh, first area that really got hit, Washington and California. Uh, but their policy, stay at home, has, has really made a difference. And I think everyone else is now seeing that. You know, they were very strict and, and very hands-on. But if you compare it to the East Coast or or other hot spots that are popping up right now, Mm -hmm. uh, New Orleans, Michigan, um, you know, who knows about Florida? Uh, If you look at those spots, you know, I think the West Coast is the model for what to do with an outbreak. Yeah, there was a really good article written, I think it was uh, the New York Times, where it was basically like, be like the Bay, stay at home, uh, be at the Bay and flatten the curve, and because San Francisco has done a, mm-hmm. uh, a pretty good job at, at flattening that curve, uh, which is great. But, uh, Kevin, you want to move on to the DHL supply chain? Yeah, well, let's do more? that. Okay. Cool. So this week we, we moved down off an all-time high. As of last week, we were at 65 in favor of the carriers. Again, 100 would be all the power to the carriers, zero all the power to the shippers. Uh, we were at 65. We've drawn down about five points, and this is simply because the like, like we had just said with that sugar rush that carriers got, they got this incredible set of volumes, capacity tightened so quickly over two weeks, mm-hmm. but it's all retreating even faster than it came. It's retreating very, very fast. I think today we were about six six percent over, or six and a half percent over year over year in uh, volumes. In, in volumes, right? So at thirty percent, just a few days ago, mm-hmm. down to six point six percent, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes from here. But yeah. with, uh, as you said, fifty four percent of retailers are closed down right now. Uh, the auto industry is closed down. Uh, the oil patch is ah. is doing miserably, no matter what, mm-hmm. right? Uh, with twenty twenty dollar barrel of oil, so we'll see, we'll, we'll see what volumes do in the next couple of weeks. Because I mean, basically, here's a, here's there's a, a large we'll, chunk. We'll of do the, a little long short in the middle of this. We, we've yeah. heard kind of the whisper number around the office is that by the middle of April or maybe the end of April, that OTVI, our outbound tender volume index, would be at nine thousand. That would be mm-hmm. extremely low for a normal freight cycle. It would be looking at like a you know a holiday in which half of us take off, like something like Easter mm-hmm. or, or something. What do you think we're there? You think we hit nine thousand in the next couple of weeks? I, I, I think it's a very good possibility. Uh, you know, I, I I hate to be that pessimistic, but mm-hmm. you know, my, my friend Jason Miller at Michigan State uh, said it on the radio the other day. You know, he said I wouldn't be surprised for thirty percent below, and it was wow. a shocking number when he said it, and it's still a shocking number. But I, I don't think I'd bet against it. No, I wouldn't either because, you know, I published this thing, I published uh, the DHL supply chain Mm -hmm. PBI last week and we talked about, I I basically made the point that that volumes are falling faster than they rose and I was like, if this trend continues, we could be looking at like volumes at at 10,500 next Thursday. We're already at 10,500 today on Monday or on on Tuesday. So things things are moving very quickly. Their freight volumes are falling through the roof. Carriers are, are, are... are, are, are stranded. I mean, they're looking. They're looking anywhere for freight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've had people comment on the PPI saying, I, "I don't run reefer. What am I supposed to do right now?" And that's the truth. Is that if it, if they don't it run is. grocery, 
they're kind of they're kind of in a, in a tough place right now. Yeah, and we both did Freightways Radio this last weekend, and we talked to a lot of drivers that they were calling in, and kind of that was their, their comments as well. Mm -hmm. in, in, in in the call-ins was you know, where am I supposed to go? Where am I supposed to go? And, and these these markets, and we can see those on the sonar all the time, that they're changing rapidly. Right, that they're hard to yep. keep up with because of restocking and where restocking is happening, where it's not, and different DCs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's dry food, is it reefer? It, it's just really changing so rapidly right now that you need, basically you need the tools to to yeah, keep you need up with like it. Sonar mm -hmm. with real time data to, exactly. be able to, to be able to tell where to go, how much to charge, uh, mm -hmm. what, 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 what is capacity looking like there now? What was it looking like last week to get you a gauge? Uh, and again, that's that's all based on how quickly we get things corralled in different places. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things we talked about on Freightways Now is that the, every place in the country is, is going through their coronavirus phases at different times, uh, which is, it has positive and, and negatives, but uh, the good thing is for freight that maybe some of those other regions will open up faster than others and tr truckers can get there and try mm -hmm. to move some freight. But uh, I, I do believe, let's, let's give our little outlook here. Um, a one month and a three month outlook on, on PPI. We're at 60 now. At the end of the month, if volumes are at 8,000, uh, you, you think you think PPI is going to swing pretty violently back towards the shippers? Back toward the shippers? Yes. Uh, if we're at 8,000, then then definitely will, right? right. Uh, what's our three month number? 40? Uh, I believe it's at 40 or 45. Yeah, right yeah now. 40 or yeah. 45 is three month number. I, I think we I think we might be at 40, 45 in a month. Yeah, my, my hope, my three month outlook is, is the hope that in three months, so you know, April, May, we're looking at the end of June, and hopefully at that point, most of the economy, most of the country will be open back up. We'll have freight flows moving. We'll have people going to ball games. We'll have. When was that? That would be the, it'd be the 1st of July. 1st of July. That's, and that's an optimistic outlook, but. It is an that, optimistic that's my hope. outlook. I, I hope so too. Uh, but, you know, basically, we, we did, um, we were at 25 in early March. Yeah, four weeks ago. Four weeks ago, right? We mm -hmm. did two 15-point jumps, mm -hmm. a 10 and a 5. Mm -hmm. We're back down 5. Yep. We could, I mean, I mean I'm we with could you. do a 15-point 15, 15 drop. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me one bit because we've seen, you know, like week. I said, volumes and, and rejections are coming back faster than they than they went up. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rejections are going to continue to fall through the roof. I did the, uh, you know, the, the compar comparison to the peak were five days or no, I'm sorry, eight days off our peak from Otri, and we've fallen 34% in the last eight days, whereas in the eight days prior to the peak, we only gained 15% um, or so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, things are falling much faster, and that's because volumes are, are tumbling. People aren't finding freight, uh, so there's, yeah. there's less fleet to reject. They have less options. Less, uh, less options. I mean, basically, we're, we're sitting here talking about it over and over again, kind of, is that basically there's a huge chunk, I mean, at least 30% of the economy that's just shut down right now. Yep. So that freight's not moving mm -hmm. because it's completely shut down. So it's really getting through all these different curves and apexes throughout the country. And what, what the timings are those are is still really up in the air is something I can't answer. It's difficult to use a lot of this survey-based data because a lot of a lot of this econ data that we talk about is survey-based, mm -hmm. uh, and it's difficult to use them because of the lag and timing that it takes to prepare all of it and put it together. You know, we saw it consumer is. spending was only down like, I don't know, half a percent or something, and I've seen other 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 people like Visa and uh, Mastercard, people that have real-time data mm -hmm. that are saying consumer spending is down something like thirty percent. So yeah. it, it's it's really hard to to take all of this economic data with a grain of salt and, and know that things are probably worse than what is being yeah. reported. Well, all the survey data on the economics, you know, is is a complete lag. Yeah, right? it's due from it was from the first week it was, of March. It was the, right. the, the first couple weeks in March, right? Especially if you if you look at unemployment, the household data is from early March. It takes them a couple weeks to prepare that and get that out for the first Friday of the month, which was basically, was that April 1st, April 2nd? Yeah, it was early. Uh, 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 April 3rd. 3rd yep. April 3rd, so it was really early. The, you know, they didn't have that extra week as well sure. uh, to prepare. So uh, you don't really get any of that data in there. Plus, it's a different data set. You know, unemployment, is, it's really weird because unemployment is a different data set entirely from jobless, jobless claims, mm -hmm. right? So when things move violently or, or get volatile, there's a, a lag. And that number is not reported for another month. So there's a month of, I mean, not really knowing, but we know, right? It yeah. doesn't really matter what the numbers are. Yeah. Um, because we do know what the, the unemployment Yeah, we've seen really how many people is. have lost their jobs yeah. and have, have applied for mm -hmm. unemployment benefits. That's true. 
So, Kev, you want to you jump on a long short? I think we're, we're going to have a little bit of a shorter episode this week. Well, we are going to have a shorter but episode. That, that's okay. We're, you know, yeah. we talked about, I remember writing the, the DHL supply chain, the PPI, for the first few weeks of the month, first few weeks of the year, and it, it just like, it almost got kind of boring and redundant writing, so it's like, know, oh, right? flat volumes, no change in capacity. It just got kind of mundane, and it's like, now, this is the new normal, where things, mm-hmm. things are so crazy that... There's nothing else to talk about other than it being crazy, and we kind of lose. Yeah, we, I mean, we lose. That's, a that's lot. what happens in, in volatile markets. I mean, if we, we have TVs all around here that, that play CNBC and Bloomberg, and you know every news news station and CNBC, you know that that's when CNBC's ratings go up. When you have volatile markets, mm-hmm. you have these huge bear markets. Uh, bull markets doesn't really really affect rating. I mean, I guess everyone looks. I, I won't say everyone loves bad news, but, but, people, but everyone watches bad news. Yeah, people, people pay more attention that. to them when they, yeah, they it's they affecting really them to the downside, right? Yes. Uh, well, cool. So let's jump in a long short. We're, we're going to go back. This, this, we may do this as a reoccurring long mm-hmm. short over the next couple of weeks because they're, they're fun. We're, we're talking jobless claims. Again, this is a weekly data set, so it's one of the best real-time numbers we can get on the unemployment situation. My question to you, Kevin, are you long or short the idea that this week's weekly jobless claims that come out Thursday will be higher than last week's? So we had uh, six. We had three point three million. Then Correct. we had six point six million, basically. Mm-hmm. So it doubled, mm-hmm. right? So, and that puts us at nine point five percent unemployment. Uh, so do I think it, it, it? Do you think it's more than six million? More than this six point six million jobless claims. It's such a big number. It's hard to even. No. It's hard to, to fathom. To, to fathom, right? Yeah. To, to even take a guess on. You know, would it really be more than six point six million? And that came when was the CARES Act signed? It wasn't. It wasn't so this, this Friday. It was, it was Friday before, right? Correct. So this this uh, the data set that we get this Thursday would have been from last week. So the week that ended okay. uh, April. What is it, April third? April third. Yeah. Yep. So basically, I think it's not quite going to hit six point six million, but it's going to get very close. Okay. I think it's good because I, I know a lot of people were trying to that couldn't actually get through. Yep. And there's there's a lot of states for 1099 or gig workers or independent owner operators, right? But they all fall under this, this 1099 umbrella. Mm-hmm. A lot of the states weren't set up to actually process those last week. So, and I don't know if that's, that's every state, but the states I'm familiar with, you couldn't even sign up for unemployment last week. I don't even know if you can this week. Uh, because basically the system just yeah the call you know, centers and the, and the, the people call there so you have to are, actually call in if yeah. you're 1099 right yep uh, so I don't even know if you get through there but I think it's going to be uh, north of five million but not quite topping 6.6 God you stole them my thunder I oh, really I, 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 so yeah that, that was actually my guess I think last week was the peak of initial jobless claims mm-hmm. I do think we're gonna have many more millions of people laid off if they haven't been laid off yet. I think the unemployment situation is nowhere near as bad as it eventually will be, but I think this six million number, I don't think it'll be hit again. I think we'll be in that three to five million range mm-hmm. for the next three or four weeks, uh, but I don't, I don't think we hit 6.6 million again. I think, I think one of those reasons, uh, you're correct there, that we did see a lot of overload of the system, almost mm-hmm. like that healthcare.com uh, debauchery mm-hmm. when, when the Affordable Care Act was rolled out, people weren't able to access what they needed. Same thing here, uh, but I just don't, I don't see us getting that. I don't see us getting that. That would make that would make 16 million in, in three weeks. And in, in my, my calculations that I made for that deep dive, I said it, that my highest number that we could get to was 18 million on top of the mm-hmm. on top of the five and a half that are already unemployed. Uh, but. 16, Does that get us to twenty percent unemployment? Is that, uh, is that what you based your calculation? No, I, on? I based my calculation. I tried to I tried to model how we could get to twenty percent, and yeah. I did. I wasn't able. It, in my assumptions, I couldn't feel confident in saying that we could ever get to a 20% with a, with a stimulus package. That was package. before the 3.3 million, right? It was. You I, that I said something like two. I was expecting two and huge. a half in that weekly jobless That's claims, right, yeah. uh, and they, there was three, 3.3. Uh, I just I think we have you know three or five, three to five million in the next couple of weeks, and we eventually have probably 20 million unemployed persons in the U.S. But that gets us somewhere like a high teens uh, unemployment rate. I think we should go and update it once again. Let's do with, it. Because we updated with 3.3 million, right? We did, yeah. We need to update it again with the 6.6 million and whatever, and comes, whatever out comes this week. Yeah, yeah, this, we this week. Because so we'll, I, have, we'll have three weeks of data there. On you know, I, I, claims. You know I, I think the consensus is getting out. You know, 20% was a shocking number three weeks ago. It was, yeah. It's we're not getting, a shocking we're getting, we're getting number anymore. We're getting desensitized for, to I know, these really. horrendous economic data numbers. It really is. Because this, it's not a horrendous, I mean, it is a horrendous number, but it's... It's not a shocking number anymore, and I'm thinking, 
you know, there, there could be a month period where we hit 30% unemployment. Could be. Yeah, I mean, I said on the coronavirus special update uh, last week that, you know, we were, we were basically talking about how the unemployment rate for March was only 4.4, and we talked about when the peak unemployment mm -hmm. rate could see. And I, I don't think unemployment rate will peak until probably late May or early June. This will be yeah. weeks away, uh, months away before the coronavirus is contained and before the economy gets back to work. I mean, uh, I just, I think things are going to get worse before they get better. I, I agree with that. All right. Uh, so we... Well, I guess I already th I, I, I ruined that long short. I, I forgot that I had put it at the end of it. Oh, the, we talked about OTVI, OTVI yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I had, I had already kind of threw that in. Uh, but the OTVI being below 9,000 by next week's episode, so let's, I can do a little math here. That would be uh, about a 10, that would be like a 12% drop 12 from drop. now. Uh, and we've already dropped uh, something like 20% in the last yeah. 15 days. So yeah. what do you think? Do you think we can drop another 12% in, 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 uh, in the next week? Yeah. 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 I think so, I, I, I think, I I think volumes it. don't have a floor right now. I think they're, they're going to I know. I, really I hate saying through. it. I really do. But I, I, I think there's a really good shot of it. Yeah. So I guess we can oh, give oh, a little oh, context oh. for those people that don't uh, have never used OTVI. Mm -hmm. So OTVI is an index of uh, con contractually moved freight in the U.S. with a starting base point in March 2018 of 10,000. So a normal freight day is anywhere from 10,500 to 9,500, you'd say? Yes. Okay. And then on a holiday, on Christmas or on Fourth of July, we see volumes fall all the way in the six or seven thousand range. Uh, Jason Miller, Dr. Jason Miller at Mi Michigan State, he was saying that he expects it to be thirty percent below normal volumes. That would be something like basically Christmas a, a day. holiday. Christmas Day, Fourth of July. In the middle of the in the middle of you the know, year. federal holiday. Yeah. yeah. In, in the middle. So that's that's how scary this is. Right. I mean, you, you go on the road mm -hmm. on a holiday and you don't see any trucks moving. You basically see any car. You don't see any cars yeah. moving either. But that would yeah. be the type of scenario we're looking well, at. If you think if about all the 30. shippers and receivers that are closed on a federal holiday, say Correct. Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, Fourth of July, it's the majority of them. So to, to get down to freight levels like that, you, you, you got to have the majority of places majority. close. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like and, the which is what we're majority. seeing, right? So, I mean, we're, we're yeah, seeing so, most, most retailers I, I close. Don't know. I don't know. And if you Possible. have a use sonar, then for the next 30 days. That's right, free if sonar. You, if you do have a truckstop.com account, you get a free uh, trial of uh, sonar for the next 30 days. And so. how do they get to that? Do they go to FreightWaves.com to our article and, and find it, or what's uh, the deal Yeah, there? you can do that. Um, I think it's FreightWaves.Sonar.com uh, or Sonar.FreightWaves.com. Okay. I and think, I, I, I can't remember one. which one it, I think it it's is. Sonar.FreightWaves.com. Yeah, Sonar.FreightWaves.com. And you can sign up for a, a trial with a truck stop account uh, through April. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome stuff. So let's give a couple more plugs. So we've got a, we've got a new uh, we had a new freight intel paper published on Friday. This was we basically uh, we had Seth Holm, uh, our our finance guru. Mm -hmm. He estimated his impact the, of the stimulus bill on the transportation uh, industry to all, all the way from volumes to to other metrics. There, it's it's a really good paper. We published it on Friday. You got any anything to add to that? No, this is a great paper. Uh, sign up for Passport uh, or Sonar. To, to have access to, to that paper, it, it kind of goes through a lot of detail. I think we'll probably do a follow-up with that. Yeah, I'm once, sure we will. Once kind of the details come out of, of what's exactly in there. You and know, that, and I'm sure we'll have to add that there, there's likely going to be another stimulus bill over the next there, couple there, months, there, so there, we'll, there will, we'll be yeah. writing the impact of that to the, to the freight yeah, market as well. I think that's going to be heavily into infrastructure. We'll help out shipping volumes, freight volumes, Definitely. truck volumes. All of that good stuff. Uh, so the next thing is 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 your show that uh, the, a show that you're definitely a part of with the coronavirus mm -hmm. freight market update. Uh, you'll probably be hosting it tomorrow. They've moved that and what the truck up to 12 p.m. Yes. Eastern time every day just to give people a set schedule. We know things are hectic these days. We wanted to make mm -hmm. things as easy as, as possible for everyone to, so to catch those live So we have a new show every day at 12. Whether it's what the truck or coronavirus freight market update or mm -hmm. put that coffee down the sales podcast. So. Yes, sir. Uh, and put that coffee down. So there you are. So you, you guys are at 12 on Wednesday? 12 that's, on that's Wednesday, yes. yes. Well, what's on the docket? Do you guys know what you're talking uh, We're going to talk about video. Video in sales, especially video as you're sitting at home and using that to market yourself, market your company, and and kind of trying something new. I've been really uh, happily pleased with, with how many, especially of the older generation that have never used video call, mm -hmm. that have never even thought about it, how they've come around so quickly to using it. Like I've seen even uh, like Larry David, for example, he's talked about how much he's loved doing Skype uh, interviews of the last couple of weeks. And that he's, that every, that a lot of people, my parents the same way, well, I've got a family call this, this afternoon. Uh, yeah, exactly right. So, so basically my friends and I were kind of spread across the US 
and um, and we finally got last week, two weeks ago, I guess. So every Friday now we have this Google Hangouts call, right. and we've just never done it before. But it's it's really enjoying. Everyone's getting a really good kick out of it. My sister dialed in last week, and about the time she got on, there was an earthquake. Oh, just, just around Palm Springs, so you could see the house shake a little bit and her reaction to it. Jeez. It, was, it, was, it was a little crazy. Yeah, so, I, think, I think that is one of the things that will stick with us. I think more people that don't live together, I think they'll be using I, I think video so. conferences to keep up with each other after this is all over. I, I, I think we will, actually. You know, I don't know how much of these, how much we've changed over the last three weeks will actually stay when we can go out and do everything, but that one might. I, I think that one will. I, I think we're, we're really having a good time doing these, these hangout calls. Well, I've had a good time doing this I have today. Too. All right. Well, Kevin, this is uh, episode 23. Thank you all so much for, for, for listening in with us. We'll see you uh, guys again next week on a six-day, six 23-hour break. See you then. Yeah.